MLB The Show 18 was a very strange time. In fact, I think it's one of the most polarizing games in MLB The Show history. Personally, I played offline most of the time, but dabbled in flipping cards and checking out what was new. Among some of the things I caught onto, the servers were really bad at launch during MLB 18. You could probably say it was comparable to MLB 21, but with the important distinction that MLB 18 didn't add much in terms of new audiences, kind of like MLB The Show 21 did with Xbox. Base stealing was also incredibly easy for whatever reason. I had guys on franchise who doubled their normal season output. There were also the Immortal programs and souvenirs, but those are a story for another time. The main topic of focus for this video was something that I thought was a really cool concept. The ticket counter. Much like the prize counter at your local arcade, you could accumulate tickets through playing games, and once you had enough tickets, you could redeem them for a specific prize. In MLB The Show, the cards were always on a rotating basis, with a timer to keep things fresh. Normally there were a half dozen cards available at one time, and in most cases they'd rotate every 18 to 24 hours on average. As the game got older, more slots were added, and there was always a good variety of cards, ranging from bronze to diamond. Eventually, the Yogi Berra Immortals card was added permanently, mostly for casual and no money spent players to have a chance at finally obtaining one. Tickets were somewhat like the program points of the day, where you could really only earn them through gameplay and completions of missions or programs. You didn't earn very many tickets in those modes, so what a lot of people did was hoard the tickets until the end of the game cycle, when the elite players would be dropped. The last thing you wanted was for a great player to be released and not have enough tickets. There were also XP level minimums for some cards in order to obtain them. So as you can see here, I'm a level 14 silver on my account, and Yogi Berra requires level 0 of diamond. XP levels went until 30 until you went up a tier, which started at bronze, and then silver, gold, and diamond. I'm guessing this was to prevent people from smurfing on new accounts, as much as it was to get you to do missions and grind at the game. Cards purchased at the ticket counter were unique, and also not usually in the marketplace. They were also non-sellable, so even if you did get some cards that seemed expensive, you could only quick sell them for up to 5,000 stubs. The ticket counter was a nice way of just easily grabbing a card that you might need to finish a collection or knock out a mission, such as rookie and veteran programs. But at the same time, you rarely wanted to spend your tickets just in case they dropped a card like postseason Carlos Beltran. The concept was good for getting players as opposed to some of the extraordinarily hard programs and flipping that players would have to do in MLB 18. But San Diego Studio axed the ticket counter and instead found new ways to have players complete missions and gain XP in a variety of ways that fit your playstyle in the following years. MLB 18 was a year of growing pains, and eventually led to what I would consider the modern style of Diamond Dynasty. But in MLB 18, the ticket counter is one of the bright spots that I think could be updated and re-added for a fun way to get new players on your squad. So what are your thoughts on the ticket counter? Did you get any good players from MLB 18? Or would you like to see a similar iteration in future MLB The Show games? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching this edition of Show & Tell. Until next time, this is Kasabi from Showzone.